So now we've looked at the characteristics, nature and function of loose connective tissue and we're ready to look at the second type of connective tissue proper which is our dense connective tissue. Do you remember where we found dense connective tissue when we took the tour of the mouth? That's right, our gums. They are a visible example of this hard and resilient tissue that can withstand resistance. Dense connective tissue differs from loose connective tissue in that its extracellular matrix is made up mainly of fibres with very little viscous ground substance. The main fibres we find there are collagen and elastic. The lack of space between the cells and the fibres is what differentiates this dense connective tissue from loose connective tissue. And the main cell we find there is the fibroblast. There's very few other cells. Now when you think about how many fibres we find in this extracellular matrix, it really does make a lot of sense as to why the fibroblast is the main cell. Take a look at this histological slide of a tendon. You can see how the extracellular matrix here is made up of many collagen fibres that make that space very dense. There are three main types of dense connective tissue in the human body. We have dense regular connective tissue where the collagen fibres are actually deposited in these parallel bundles. We have dense irregular connective tissue where the collagen fibres are deposited in a haphazard direction so there's no particular pattern. And then there's elastic connective tissue where the elastic fibres outnumber the collagen fibres. Let's take a brief look at each of these. We already know that dense connective tissue is found in our mouth. But dense regular connective tissue is also found in tendons that connect muscle to bone and in ligaments that connect bone to bone, such as in the bones of our skull. The regular dense connective tissue resists stress in the direction of the fibres, while the dense irregular connective tissue is designed to withstand stress from all directions. This tissue forms the supporting layers or sheaths that surround our delicate organs, as well as forming the layer of our skin that we refer to as the dermis. Let's have a look at a picture of the skin so that we can see how all these different tissue types are interrelated. The outer layer is the epidermis, made up of epithelial tissue. The middle layer, the dermis, is made up of a layer of areolar tissue and a layer of dense irregular connective tissue. The deeper layer, the hypodermis, is made up of adipose tissue. Finally, elastic connective tissue is found between the vertebrae of our spinal column. This is where we need the resilient and springy properties of elastic tissue that is able to recoil and extend with a variety of movements. One very important function of this dense connective tissue is that it forms these connective sheaths that we refer to as fascia. Fascia are coverings that we can either find superficially towards the skin or even deeper towards our deeper organs. Fascia help to support and compartmentalise our body structures. Collectively, fascia could be referred to as our body stocking. Let me show you what I mean with the help of this orange. When you start to peel the orange, you can notice that the skin is actually attached to the underlying meaty bit by these delicate fibres. These delicate fibres are very similar to the loose connective tissue that lines our skin. When you look closer on the inside of the orange, you can see that there are further layers that keep these juicy pods segmented or compartmentalised, similar to the way in which our connective tissue or our fascia compartmentalise our body structures. What if an orange lacked these types of connecting sheaths? The juicy pods would collapse. Similarly, the deeper dense connective tissue sheaths hold the individual muscle bundles together to form a larger muscle. So let's just summarise what we have learnt. Connective tissue proper can be divided into two groups, loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. Loose connective tissue is divided into subtypes that we refer to as areola, adipose and reticular. Then dense connective tissue has also got three subtypes. These are dense regular, 
dense irregular, and elastic. Each of these subclasses of connective tissue serve to insulate, protect, connect, stabilise and compartmentalise our body structures. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning all about connective tissue proper. You are now ready to move on to our next interactive learning activity, which will help you prepare for the knowledge test.